Ferrari is set to bring massive upgrades to their SF24, following their dominant 1-2 finish at the Australian Grand Prix. After breaking Max Verstappen's winning streak in Singapore, Carlos Sainz has repeated the feat in Australia. The Spaniard was faultless throughout the race and brought home an easy win with his teammate Charles Leclerc right behind him. Now building on the momentum, Scuderia Ferrari is planning to fast track their developmental timeline and introduce huge upgrades in Japan instead of Imola. Less than two years ago, Ferrari was the victim of a technical directive that hampered its performance. This directive had ramifications for last season's package, which failed to deliver the lap times the simulation tools in Maranello suggested. Team principal Fred Vasseur is well aware of Formula One's cutthroat nature. Ferrari knows better than most teams about the challenge of sustaining a strong development trajectory across a season. Ferrari is working to bring forward its 2024 upgrades at round four in Japan. Because the Chinese GP will be a sprint weekend, teams will generally avoid introducing new concepts at the fifth race weekend of 2024. Ferrari cannot afford to stay still, even with their encouraging position in the championship. As rumored, the upgrades will include a new floor design, side pods, and even bodywork. In the two-week break leading up to the 2024 Japanese GP, the team back in Maranello will prepare the new and upgraded SF24. A fast-tracked timeline was always a possibility, and now the Italian team is taking that leap of faith. The result in Australia brought Leclerc within four points of Verstappen in the driver's standings. While Sainz would likely be the world championship leader, had it not been for his absence in Saudi Arabia following an appendectomy. Sainz finished behind Verstappen and Red Bull teammate Perez on the podium in Bahrain before Leclerc achieved the same result in Jeddah. The results mark a continuation of a strong finish to last season for Ferrari, and Vasseur appears to think there is plenty more potential to be unlocked from a car that is much easier to develop than its predecessor. We made a huge step. I think it's more the consistency between the two compounds, or between one stint and the other one. The car is much easier to drive, much easier to read also for the drivers. By the way, much easier to develop. It's probably the biggest step that we did compared to last year. To have something that we cannot easily manage, but at least to have a good read of the car quite early in the weekend. Confidence is a huge part of the results in our business, and I think we are building up the confidence over the last month, but it was already the case over the last part of the season last year. While on paper, it was a very strong result for Ferrari. There was the caveat that with Verstappen retiring on the third lap, the Scuderia didn't beat the dominant Dutchman in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. Although such had been their form all weekend long, many believed they had the pace to take the fight to Verstappen regardless. I'm not focused at all on the performance of Red Bull. I'm focused on the performance of our car. We made a step forward. It is already the case this weekend that when we are putting everything together, and I don't think we'll be able to do it every week, that when we are, we can put them under pressure, and when they are under pressure, they can make mistakes so we need to continue in this direction. Vasseur was quick to praise signs, the Spaniard having completed a remarkable recovery from the surgery that sidelined him in Jeddah. Signs was quick from the off in Melbourne, despite admitting he tried to take it easy on Friday, outqualifying his teammate, and then passing Verstappen for the lead in the early stages of the Grand Prix. He recorded his third victory for the Scuderia, and the first where he didn't start from pole. Ferrari are just four points behind Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship now, with Leclerc also leapfrogging Perez to sit second in the Drivers' Championship. But if Singapore last year is anything to go by, Red Bull tend to bounce back strongly from disappointment. Vasseur will be wary heading into Suzuka, but with his team showing huge signs of progress, especially with their tire management, there is plenty of cause for optimism at Maranello. Verstappen and Sainz were paired together as rookies at Toro Rosso back in 2015. And Sainz is currently jobless, as he put it, for 2025, but is likely to be attracting interest after a stellar start to the season. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner admitted that Sainz could be among the candidates to partner Verstappen in 2025. The former Red Bull-affiliated driver, having been something of a nemesis for his old employers, as the only non-Red Bull race winner since mid-2022. But given that Sainz is likely to be one of many candidates considered by Red Bull, not least current driver Perez, whom Horner and the team have stressed that the seat is his to lose for 2025, they have no shortage of options for who to place alongside the three-time world champion. 
When asked if Sainz is underrated in the world of Formula One, his current and former teammate both denied that was the case, and Leclerc believes his phone has been busy of late. I think everybody knows Carlos's worth in the paddock. He's one of the highest rated drivers in the paddock, and he's been extremely strong every time he was in a Formula One car, and he has shown it multiple times. So I don't think he's underrated for that. I think everybody knows Carlos's worth, and that's why I've said many times that I'm not too worried about his future, because I'm sure that many, many team principals are, he doesn't say it, but for sure they are speaking with him, and I'm sure he will have many opportunities, and he'll just have to make the best choice for his career. One potential hurdle for a Red Bull return is the circumstances of his time alongside Verstappen as rookies at Toro Rosso. There was a lot of tension, though not exactly between the two drivers, as their fathers Carlos Sainz Sr. and Jos Verstappen are big fixtures in their careers, and the respective entourages ended up creating a quite toxic atmosphere. To paraphrase Red Bull Motorsport advisor Helmut Marko, that might not be something Red Bull is keen to revisit. And there are some close to signs who suspect Max Verstappen wouldn't welcome it either, maybe because it risks being disruptive, and maybe because Sainz is too good to be the kind of easily beaten number two driver that Verstappen's enjoyed since Ricardo left at the end of 2018. But in pure performance terms, Sainz must be under consideration, and if not by Red Bull, then by others, having reminded everybody not just how good he is, but just how adept he is at being in the right place at the right time. Sainz himself doubts this win will help him get a job. For sure it has no harm that is 100%, but I'm still without a job for next year, so I guess this will help it. I think everyone knows more or less what I'm capable of doing. I race for myself. I race for to keep proving to myself that I can win whenever I get a competitive car and whenever there's an opportunity to win in a weekend. I don't race to prove to team bosses or to prove to people my value. I race to prove to myself that if I'm given a car, I can get it done and I can be up there. That's the mentality and the approach that I have and I will keep having the rest of the year. Ferrari's next question to answer is whether they can continue to pressure Red Bull. Race victories will be the target moving forward, although regularly outperforming the reigning F1 champion still seems beyond reach. For Ferrari, keeping their momentum from Albert Park will be essential. Suzuka is not a circuit that will necessarily suit the SF24, especially relative to Red Bull. Max was in a league of his own when the F1 Circus visited the event last year. In this sense, Ferrari's objective is not to blow the RB20 out of the water every weekend. Instead, a more realistic objective is to be within striking distance of pressuring Christian Horner's team and giving them more headaches than they experienced last year. So what are your expectations for Ferrari this year? Do you think they can win the Constructors' Championship? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest F1 news.